Welcome to Polish Jazz Podcasts from polishjazz.com. For a complete list of our podcasts, along with a Spotify playlist for each episode, please visit polishjazz.com slash podcasts. Today's show is called Parents the Rodzice. This podcast series will be about the history of Polish jazz and its most important figures. Each episode will be released with a Spotify playlist that references all the music that we mention in the show. As a person raised in multicultural environments, I'm lucky to be in a position where I can be one foot in and one foot out, both in the American and Polish world. I cannot wait to get started, and I hope that you'll join me on this journey. Witamy, or welcome, to all you curious music lovers who have tuned into this podcast. We can't wait to get to know you. Today's show is particularly important to me because I got to interview my parents. From all the research that I've done into Polish jazz, I can't seem to find many testimonials. So here we go. Okay. Okay. Ready? You're ready. Okay. What is jazz? Jazz to me is a freedom of expression. Um, it's the kind of music that doesn't have any boundaries. You can basically play anything like classical music, uh, pop, rock, in a jazzy way. So it's basically, it's like you can do whatever you want to with jazz. And that's what just me. This is a good question. Then there are hundreds of books and articles uh, dealing with swing, blue notes, complex chords, call and response, improvisation, all those things that supposedly make jazz what it is. But I personally believe that jazz is a music which is played by the jazz musicians. That's it. And you cannot talk about it, you cannot write essays about it. You have to listen. When you listen, you will know. And what does um, Polish jazz mean to you? Specifically Polish jazz, not just jazz. Polish jazz, it means to me it's my first love, my youth in Poland, and a small jazz club in Warsaw called Aquarium. Tell me more about this aquarium. It was basically the only jazz club in the 80s that you would go to listen to jazz, and uh, you would listen to Polish jazz men, and uh, it was just very cool. What do you mean by cool? you would feel different you know it was still communism in Poland and, but you felt kind of free in one word it means freedom it means anti-conformity not agreeing with the status quo looking for something new something better something other people don't do it means honesty it means improvisation it means innovation. It's just to be like no other. And um, how did you learn about jazz for the first time in Poland? From the radio. Interestingly, my first introduction to jazz was a British saxophone player called Dick Perry. I'm sure you are familiar with uh, Pink Floyd, uh, The Dark Side of the Moon, don't you? Uh, it, I, was, I was the biggest um, Pink Floyd fan in 1970s and I was listening to um, Dark Side of the Moon one day and, and the song Us and Them uh, just mesmerized me by the solo of the instrument I was not really very familiar with, uh, saxophone. Uh, I could not find too much saxophone in art rock music like Pink Floyd, <laughs> so I figured... I can check jazz, this thing called jazz. And that's how it started. Thank you, Pink Floyd. Uh, I learned from my future husband, but really my 
um, romance with Jess started with um, looking for a boyfriend. I, you know, with my girlfriend, we didn't have boyfriends. We just uh, started college and we decided that, you know, where we can find cool guys. And um, it was like, uh, probably like a jazz club or a jazz festival, but it was very difficult to get there. Um, and uh, we went to the summer camp and I met my future husband, who by accident he offered me uh, to he invited me to to a jazz festival called Jazz Jamboree, which was really the coolest and the best festival in Europe at this time. So um, I was like, "Wow, yeah, <laughs> I want to go." And then we got married. <laughs> just right after, there was no in between. It just you know you went to the festival and then that was it. <laughs> no, it was like you know it took us five six years of going to just jamboree together <laughs> and um so when would you listen to jazz in poland like what was the circumstance was it clubs was it vinyls like what was the culture of actually listening to it i it was all of this all of the above uh, it was uh yeah vinyls uh it was uh, every year jazz festival because it was the only one and but it was really, as I said before, it was like the best in Europe. So you could, uh, there were like the best musicians from, from all over the world. So uh, this was the biggest event. But also, as I said, we used to go to this jazz club, uh, Aquarium. And, um, but usually they were like only Polish jazz men. But, you know, it doesn't mean that it wasn't good. It was, you know, Polish jazz men were really, really good. So it was, yeah, I, that's how I, it's all started. Radio was my primary venue where I was able to listen and learn about jazz. Uh, we had a lot of jazz in the radio in Poland in 1970s and 80s. I especially remember a radio show called Trzy Kwadranse Jazzu, uh, which was my favorite uh, f- a show and my jazz university. Uh, I especially like programs by um, uh, which were hosted by Jan Ptaszyn Wrubleski, who was not only a, a radio DJ, uh, a presenter and, and, and jazz personality, but he was a, a real uh, musician and band leader of many bands. He even uh, worked with Komeda. Uh, there were, of course, other DJs. Uh, Willis Conover was still hosting some special shows on the Polish radio, but Jan Taschen Wrubleski was always my favorite. And um, do you have a favorite musician at the time? We had great, great musicians that came to this jazz festival, and uh, my biggest and you know the most important m- memory for you know that will stay with me forever will is when Miles Davis came in '83. And uh, usually, star like Miles Davis was uh, in the end of the festival, so it would be like around midnight. Um, and it was really interesting because they just told us to leave the the, 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 the room and wait for for Miles Davis. So everybody left. Everybody was in the couloir. And, you know, of course, smoking and, you know, you could smell marijuana, which wasn't illegal. And uh, we waited and waited. And this, this, you know, this magic was rising. You know, it's like, you know, we and they, they made us to wait like for at least one hour. And we came and everybody was breathless. Miles Davis came out and was like silence. Nobody was talking and everybody was like, God came to the stage. So that's how it was with jazz in Poland. He started playing and, you know, everybody was like breathless. It was just something incredible. And I know that for Miles Davis was incredible as well because he, after this concert, he said it was the best audience that he had, that he has ever had. So uh, he came back like in five years. And foreign musicians coming to Poland during my youth so annual jazz jamboree festival in warsaw in the fall was the only place for me to see and to hear real jazz american jazz um, 
Al Jazz Jamboree, I had the chance to attend the concerts of many great musicians, uh, my, you know, idols like Stan Getz, Sonny Rollins, Kid Jarrett, and of course Miles Davis, twice. And many, many more um, European musicians and from all over the world. But uh, listening to uh, the music at Jazz Jamboree was just a part of the experience. Uh, the event took place in the largest concert venue uh, in Poland those days, uh, called Sala Kongresowa. Uh, uh, it was called uh, Congress Hall because that's where all the Communist Party Congresses took place. <laughs> How ironic! Uh, uh, so each fall, party congress place turned into the jazz mecca. And uh, during that time, tens of thousands of young people from all over Eastern Europe were basically inviting Warsaw and occupying uh, congress hall and surrounding areas. <laughs> Sometimes they didn't have money to buy the tickets. They were just, you know, camping outside in the cold. Uh, you didn't have to go to the uh, congress hall to get the feeling, to, to, to feel cosmopolitan, to feel European, to feel free. Uh, actually, they were wandering in the corridors uh, of uh, Sala Congresova when the music was played at the concert hall. It was sometimes more fun. You can like talk to people, you know, light the joints with the very bad Polish marijuana with some hippies from Eastern Europe or talk to the guys from Hungary about the rock music in Hungary. It was fun. Um, uh, it gave you some kind of feeling of solidarity, of independence from all this shit was outside going on. Uh, I love it. And, of course, you can easily get the girls to go out with you there. And that's how I seduce your mother. And um, how was it how was it to leave Poland to go to the United States, which was the actual birthplace of jazz, if, if Polish jazz had meant so much to you in the past? It was different. In Poland, jazz was very elitist, and uh, it was like also a lot of young people listened to jazz, a lot of students, and uh, uh, as I told you that uh, this festival this jamboree was like really, really big in Poland. You couldn't get tickets to, to, to go there. Um, people from all over Europe would come and uh, to this festival and you would have, you would listen to the best musicians from all over the world. You know, you, I listened to um, Miles Davis, for, for example, twice, uh, Kit Jarrett, uh, Chick Corea. You really, every year you had like star of jazz and so in Poland it was really something very uh, sophisticated uh, and when I went to, to, to the United States I was surprised because it was music of all people <laughs> I went to in New York I went you know to most of the jazz clubs that were like like, you know, iconic clubs, and they were mostly for tourists. So, or like jazz festivals were on the beach during the day. So it was like background music instead of just this big event as I used to have, used to listen to in Poland. So this was a huge difference, how jazz was, um, what kind of, how jazz was considered, you know, as a music in Poland and, and in the United States. It was like just, you know, as I said, it was an old music. It wasn't really nothing uh, elitist. But there is more to this story. Uh, when I got to New York City in late 1980s, there was this thing there going on there called Klasmer Jazz. Uh, it was basically a jazz music played by the musicians who identify themselves with their Jewish heritage, with, with Jewish culture. I'm not Jewish, and, and I have a DNA test to prove it, <laughs> uh, uh, but I really got into the Klasmer jazz. I spent a lot of time um, uh, hanging around Knitting Factory, which was a, a jazz club on Houston Street uh, near my apartment in uh, Lower East Side, 
uh, and there was so much great music there every night. Uh, uh, Plasmatics were there. Um, Phil Gla Philip Glass, you know, uh, uh, was um, uh, stopping by often. And of course, John Zorn and, and Masada. Uh, uh, listening to this Klasmer jazz, at, you know, late 80s and very uh, early 1990s, I realized what, what Polish jazz is and how can I define it. So <laughs> I figured that, well, not, not exclusively my idea, there are a few other uh, <laughs> philosophers <laughs> who are saying the same thing. But anyway, I, I believe that um, uh, who we are, uh, what we um, do, uh, uh, what our habits are, what our beliefs are, uh, what expression we hold, uh, it's not coming from us alone, uh, but from the culture we grew up in and we are shaped by. Listening to Klasmer Jazz, which was based on jazz, with those very distinctive characteristics, you know, all this Hasidic and, and Jewish uh, stuff, I realized uh, why we can call uh, American music play thousand miles away from the United States jazz. And why could we po call it Polish jazz? Uh, it is because of sensibility of the musicians, of the environment they grew up in, the, the lullabies they, they listened to when they were kids, the books they, they, they had to um, read uh, when they were in school, the, the music they listened to, and they listened to the same, you know, music <laughs> my, my, um, uh, my days, uh, um, because we didn't have so many choices. And it's the weather. It's the, you know, history of Poland. It's all those myths we grew up with and all the things we were missing and all the things we have in abundance. So that's what making us who we are. And that applies to art <laughs> and applies to jazz. So that's what it's Polish jazz for me. It's the American music played by the Polish musicians who are influenced by their culture and by the, you know, country they grew up in. Because now, like, the, the golden age of Polish jazz has also passed. Like, you, you lived it. That's what happened in the 80s and in the, in the 70s. So do you think that Polish jazz still matters today? Like, does it matter to talk about it? And, and if so, why? I think it does. I think jazz will never die. Uh, it's like a classic music. It's not... It will you will have always a crowd that listen to it. Of course, it's not as important. It's not as, it's mostly, I think the most important, the peak of jazz was more like 50s and 60s. Uh, in Poland, I think it was different because of the political system and uh, the lack of uh, impossibility of travel and traveling. So it was for us, you know, it was really, uh, like window to the world uh, but right now I think Polish jazz still matters there are still great Polish musicians and you know like they, they, they create different kind of music than in the 50s or 60s like for example Mojar and he plays uh, Chopin for example in a jazzy way so it still matters it's still great it just very niche music right now yes i believe uh, the polish jazz matters more than ever today um i it is maybe my personal opinion but i believe that the development of jazz in the united states uh, uh, it's not how it used to be it you know it shifted to outside of the states it's happening in other countries uh, 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 with Europe uh, being the most important one, including Poland. I think that in the United States, jazz is losing its status as something, you know, avant-garde, something innovative, uh, something that, you know, changes uh, art and people's minds. Um, 
don't take me wrong, there are tons of, you know, great musicians in the United States, jazz musicians. I, I'm lucky to know and, and, and to have privilege to work uh, with them on some of the projects. Uh, you know, a few names come to my mind, like um, Matthew Shipp, you know, Ken Vandermark, Steve Swell. <laughs> By the way, all of them are recording artists for Polish label, not two, in Krakow. And it's not the coincidence, because that's where the action is. That's why the American musicians want to come to the uh, to Europe to tour here, because the you know the audience is here and and the vibes it's here, the money it's here. Um, I remember going to Dave Douglas uh, concert like 12, 15 years ago. You know, Dave Douglas alumni of of Masada. <laughs> And Klasmer uh, kind of thing uh, from uh, early 80s uh, I mentioned before uh, uh, that time I think he was number one trumpet player in, in downbeat ranking uh, like number one trumpet player in the United States and you know how many people show up at the concert? 17, that's all and man like two weeks later uh, Thomas Stanko Quartet had the concert in the same venue Jess, Jess Bakery, and hundreds of people show up. And that means something. That means something about the relevance of jazz, about Polish jazz, and what the public is interested in. So yeah, Polish jazz is very relevant, more than ever. And um, is there one thing that like you'd want to tell people if, about Polish jazz, like a specific thing that you'd want people to know? Yeah, I just listen to Polish jazz because it's we've got really great uh, Polish jazzmen, so very like icons uh, from the past, like as I said, Komeda, Bleski, Namysłowski. But still, a new jazz is uh, different, and it brings something new. So, if you like jazz, definitely listen to Polish jazz. Let me add one more thing about relevance of Polish jazz today and relevance of jazz in general. Um, we're living in the very strange world right now with all the uh, concepts and institutions and, and everything we grew up with uh, becoming irrelevant, becoming uh, obsolete. Um, political norms, political parties, social uh, institutions, family, religion, uh, and so on. Um, everything is gone, and, and, and we don't know where we're going, and, and we closing ourselves in our own bubbles. We don't want to exchange ideas with other people who think differently than we do. So we need something to, to get us together, to, to, to move the world back in tracks where it's supposed to go. Uh, and we have a tool to our disposal. And this tool, I believe, it's art. It's music. It's jazz. It's, it's Polish jazz. So we, 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 we have to use it. We have to... Uh, let artists to be artists to create new things to develop new uh, ideas to 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 teach us new new concepts and that's what the art is all about and um, that's why jazz is so important as a, one of the most innovative um, arts that's what polish jazz is relevant today <laughs> This podcast was recorded by the Polish Jazz Network, a coalition of musicians, professionals, and jazz enthusiasts. Voice recording and sound editing was done by Misha Lurska. The text was written by Cesare Lurski and Misha Lurska. Music is sampled from the musicians mentioned above. Piano music in the introduction and conclusion was played by jazz musician Mia Tuchillo. All rights to this podcast are reserved by the Polish Jazz Network. Jazz it's the greatest thing America culture ever produced. End of the story for me.